Today we are looking at one of the most important months in the history of Marvel Comics. These are all the cover date comics of September 1963. This is the first time Marvel had released 15 different titles in a single month since the Atlas explosion implosion of 1957. Stanley was on a big uh, ride uphill creating new character after new character and this is one of the biggest ones. Why? We're going to find out looking at this amazing list of releases, starting with Amazing Spider-Man number four. We're going to look at all the key features of what's important about all these Marvel comics that came out this month. Amazing Spider-Man number four is the 73rd Silver Age superhero comic from Marvel Comics, started in late 1961, and they were on a real roll at this time. This is a key book. First appearance of The Sandman. Classic red background cover on this 12 cent issue. Print run estimated at 175,000 copies. Looking at the CGC census, you can see there's over 2,000 copies graded in all conditions, but only three that are 9.6 or better. Heritage has now sold over 400 copies in the last two decades. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can compare the prices for raw copies in all conditions. Low grade, you'll see, has gone up about one and a half times over the last 16 years. But in high grade, the book has almost tripled. And this is just for raw grade conservative prices. If you want to see how books are really selling, check out recent eBay sales or heritage auctions or the GP analysis to see how the graded CGC copies have been selling. And of course, high grade copies are breaking records all the time. On the census overall, there are no 9.8s. There are three 9.6s. There is a UK price variant. 37 copies have been graded. The highest copy is an 8.0. The next big book coming out this month is one of the biggest, most important books of all time from Marvel Comics. Yes, it is Avengers number one. Stanley took some of his most popular characters he'd created over the last year and a half and put them in a team, sort of as a tribute to Justice League of America, which was a huge book for DC. So you can see we've got Thor, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, and Ant-Man and Wasp, all in the original team. Classic cover, red background. Print run estimated at 200,000 copies. Of course, this has become the biggest movie of all time and uh, is the leader in the box office for all the Marvel movies. So of course, lots of demand for this. <coughs> Look how the CG set, CGC census has it grown in the last decade. Over 3000 copies graded now, including five 9.6s or better. Heritage sales, of course, keep growing constantly. In the Overstreet Price Guide, we also see giant movement. The book has gone up four times in lowest grade and in high grade has gone up nine times. And that's for raw copies. On the CGC census, there are no 9.8s ever graded, but there are five 9.6s. Lots of UK price variants graded, but again, the highest ever is an 8.5. Fantastic Four, number 18, the flagship title for Marvel. It was an ongoing series and has the highest uh, issue number for any new titles created. Fantastic Four, 18. It's the first appearance in origin of the Super Scroll, art by Jack Kirby. Nice action cover. Again, CGC, 600 copies, only two 9.6s or better. Print run estimated 200,000 copies. Sales of Marvel books are definitely on the rise at this point. They're building a huge fan base at this point. Overstreet, price guide, an interesting book. It was climbing for quite a while and you can see it peaked in 2010 and then it actually has fallen and it still hasn't regained its low grade price even after a decade. But in high grade, things are different. The book has gone up four times. On the census, there is one 9.8 and one 9.6 and only three copies of the UK price edition graded and the average is a four. So no, no high grade copies at all of this book. Something also is new for Stan Lee. He decided to release his first superhero annuals. These were giant size issues. 
And in fact, Fantastic Four Annual number one started a new trend, 72 big pages, 25 cent cover price when comics were still 12 cents. So that's double regular price. You had to save up your money to afford that book, but you got a lot for your money. And of course it features Fantastic Four's Battle with the Submariner, an early Spider-Man appearance, and 15 pinups in this issue. 772 copies graded, 13 9.6s or better, surprisingly, due to the thickness. Overstreet price guide, almost no movement in 20 years. It's basically stalled in low grade and even in mid grade as well. High grade has not doubled in uh, raw 9.2. And on the census, we do have miraculously three 9.8s and 10 9.6s. No UK price variants of this book. Next on our list, Journey into Mystery number 96. This was now officially Thor's title monthly, starting with issue 83. So this is now the 14th issue. And Thor battles Merlin in this issue, which has a Jack Kirby cover. And the story even features John F. Kennedy and his daughter, Carolyn. On the census, only 282 copies graded in total, but there are 12 9.6s or better. Heritage has not sold very many of these at all over the years. Over Street Price Guide, it's doubled in the last 16 years in lower grades. High grade, it has gone up more than triple. And on the census, there are two 9.8s, but 10 9.6s. Only two of the UK price variants have been graded. So after that, you'll see we've got Kid Cold Outlaw, a Western title, Millie the Model Annual Number 2, Millie the Model, and Modeling with Millie. So Millie the Model has three titles on the stands this month, more than any other character, showing the importance of this title and how big the girls' teen market was that Stanley was writing. And they also put out Patsy Walker this month. So now we're going to look at Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos, number three. Now, this was not yet a superhero title, but we're including it because later it would become one. So what do we got? One of the rarest marvels in high grade. And Reed Richards appears in this issue as an OSS agent. Only 120 copies graded by CGC. Five 9.6s are better. Very few copies sold at Heritage Auctions. Interesting yellowish background. In Overstreet Price Guide over the last 16 years, you'll see it's only gone up $9 in lowest grade. And it's almost tripled in highest grade raw. On the census, there are no 9.8s, but there are five 9.6s. Strange Tales 112 appeared this month. This was now the 12th issue in a row featuring the Human Torch in solo stories and on each cover. And in this issue, the Human Torch battled the eel in his first appearance. And this issue also features a full page advertisement for Avengers number one. Cover by Jack Kirby, print run 189,000 copies. CGC has sold very few copies of this, only 143. Three 9.6s, Heritage also not selling many. This is not considered a major key, which is why the numbers are so low. And the Overstreet Price Guide, over the years, the book has doubled in lowest grades, and it has more than tripled in high grades raw. On the census, no 9.8s, but there are three 9.6s. And the UK price variant, there are only three copies in total graded, the highest being a 7.5. What's exciting about this month is not only do we get a new issue of Strange Tales, but we also get Strange Tales Annual number two. 72 big pages. This is a very classic cover, Spider-Man and the Human Torch. In the Overstreet Price Guide, you'll see demand is truly strong for this book. And in low grades, it's almost doubled. And in high grades, it has tripled. And this is even a more expensive book. And on the census, there is one 9.8 and four 9.6s. There is a German edition, but it didn't come out until 1999. And next on our list of releases, Tales of Suspense 45. 
This was now a superhero title starting with issue 39. This was the seventh issue in a row featuring Iron Man. This book also features the first appearances of Pepper Potts and Happy Hogan. And also the villain Jack Frost, who is later named Blizzard. Jack Kirby cover art, print run 188,000 copies. And now on the CGC census, there are 463. Only two 9.6s are better, and Heritage has sold over 100 copies. Nice, solid green background on the cover. Iron Man still in his original outfit. And in the Overstreet Price Guide, we can see the book has more than doubled in lowest grades. And the book has more than gone up four times in high-grade raw. Next on our list is Tales to Astonish 47. This book features Ant-Man and the fourth appearance of the Wasp. Jack Kirby cover art once again, sort of a cream white background cover featuring the two stars. CGC, 202 copies in total, seven 9.6s or better. In the Overstreet Price Guide, we've got not even double over the last 16 years. Still, this is a very cheap book in low grade. In high grade, it's tripled. On the census, there are three 9.8s and four 9.6s. Only two of the UK price variants ever graded, the highest being a 7.5. Also this month, we have another Western, Two Gun Kid, and the biggest book of the month, X-Men number one. One of the most iconic comics ever created by Marvel Comics. Not only possibly uh, Stanley's greatest superhero book, interesting that it came out the same month as Avengers. So Stanley created two very important superhero teams, both this month. And of course, he already had Fantastic Four. So that means on the newsstands every month now, there are three superhero teams written by Stan Lee. This is the most valuable first appearance Marvel comic published in 1963. Again, sort of a cream white background cover. Uh, comics of this era have a lot of chipping on the covers, kind of poor quality paper. Print run estimated at 175,000 copies. And of course, this features some of the original team characters, such as Angel, Beast, Cyclops, Iceman, and Marvel Girl. And we also get Professor X and Magneto. In the Overstreet Price Guide, lots of movement because this is such a major book. It has almost tripled in the lowest grades. In high grade, it's gone up about six times. And that's just for raw copies. And of course, record prices set all the time for CGC graded copies. And on the CGC census, a record 3,700 copies graded, but only two 9.8s and four 9.6s. There are lots of UK price variants graded since this is such an expensive book, but still the highest is only about a 9.0. Let's compare these books now on the CGC census, see what we can learn about rarity. So we can also tell a lot by popularity. X-Men number one has the most copies graded. That does not mean it's the easiest book to find. It means that the demand is so high that everybody's getting their copies slapped. So 3,700 copies, but yet still only two 9.8s. After that, the big book of the month is Avengers number one with 3,200 copies. And then we've got Amazing Spider-Man 4 with the first appearance of Sandman at 2,000 copies. After that, the uh, number of copies graded drops significantly. And you'll see, of course, Sergeant Fury is the lowest at 120. But Strange Tales 112 only has 143. That's the lowest for a true superhero title. Just for comparison's sake, I included Millie the Model Annual Number 2. This is a teen girl's title. Not much uh, interest of this, of course, from superhero collectors. So there's only nine copies have ever been graded. Highest being about a 9.0. And of course, looking at the average grade also gives you an idea of how much people are willing to grade low grade copies because these books are rare. They're getting expensive. So usually that means that the book with the most copies graded will actually have the lowest average. And that is true here with X-Men number one. The average copy graded is only a four, meaning that there is many copies under a four than there is above, which is an amazing amount. That's like 1900 copies graded 
under a four. Well, there you have it. That's the big Marvel comics for September 1963. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. I look at a new month every single week on this series. Thanks for watching.